Welcome back. Today we'll be making our movement script a little bit more engaging. We'll be adding a dash mechanic for a burst of speed while jumping, adding a tail renderer to show the effect, and another camera to the screen to see how it looks from a different angle. The IDE should look familiar if you've been following my earlier tutorials. The only change we've made at this point is that we now have two cameras on the scene. In the new camera, we've set the viewpoint rec x value to 0.5, and in the other camera, which is attached to the player object, to 0. In both cases, we've changed the width to 0.5. This will allow us to show cameras side by side on the screen. Going to the player movement script, we'll be creating four new private variables for our dash mechanic. A bool called dashing, which will handle whether the player is currently in the dash. Dashing power, which is added velocity we'll be applying. Dashing time, which will be how long we will dash for. And dashing cooldown, which will be the time the player needs to wait between dashes. We'll also be adding a serialized field called private trail renderer TR for the added trail effect. Going to our start method, the first thing that we need to do is set our trail renderer's emitting value to false. This will allow us to not show a trail renderer when the scene starts. In our update method, we'll be mapping our dash mechanic to the left shift key. We'll check for that button press in addition to checking that the dash isn't already in progress, as well as making sure that the player can only dash after they have already left the ground. With those checks in place, we'll be using a new coroutine called dash to do the bulk of the work. Now we get to the fun part. This iEnumerator dash function is used to create a special dashing action for our player character in the game. This function begins by setting a boolean value of dashing to be true and activating our trail renderer system to show the progress of the dash. It then calculates a velocity vector composed of the character's current forward vector multiplied by the dashing power value to create a new dashing vector. After waiting for a number of seconds determined by the dashing time value, the velocity is reset to zero. The trail renderer system is deactivated, and we'll add another weight as determined by the dashing cooldown value. Once the cooldown ends, the dashing boolean is set to true again to allow the player to activate the dash again. Now that we're back in the Unity IDE, we need to do a couple of things. You'll notice our player movement script now takes a trail renderer. So the first thing we'll need to do is add a trail renderer component to our player object. Before we do that, let's configure the trail renderer. We're going to set the time to 1 instead of 5. We're also going to change the width of our trail to start at 1, but trail off near the end. Finally, we're going to set the material to red to give it a little bit more in the presentation. Now we drag the trail renderer component into the player object TR field. Let's test it out and see how we've done.
As always, I hope you found this useful, and you can find the source code at the bottom of this video. If you did, please consider telling me in the comments, and like and subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Have a great day, and keep playing.